Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe. We are trying to hit 50,000 until the end of the year. Help me out there and let's get into it. And we are fly out the Tornado ADV, man. I actually wanted to just focus on the Tornado a little bit earlier than I would uh, normally do. Just because a lot of people actually want to know how it feels like. And I already did a video talking a little bit about the Yak 41. I will be doing more on that, but still, I wanted to talk how it is performing right now, the Tornado. It is, as expected, obviously not a very good dogfighter. That's just obvious, right? But let's talk a little bit about the radar and the missiles, which are obviously the, the also uh, like the main difference between a normal fighter that you will normally fly in other nations, right? I think the Fox Hunter Raider, it is one of the best Raiders in the game right now. It is really, really good. It has its problems, or better, it, it doesn't have some features that other Raiders do. Like, for example, the helmet-mounted side lock with the MiG-29 and Yak, for example. Or maybe a normal search pull stopper that would use medium PRF modes to actually be actually good in the post upper mode against notching targets so with those two things obviously in the features kind of department it is lacking a little bit but everything else is really amazing um it is one of the greatest ranges that you can get in a raider and also uh just overall capacity of actually looking uh sideways and looking further ahead the radar is really good, especially at longer ranges, being able to actually lock and try to fire a missile and then notch and not notch, but like crank and you have this capability. So the radar is very, very good. Uh, but it has one problem. Uh, the super temp sky flash, which is the sky flash that we are using in it, it does have a lot of energy. It feels like it is more closer to what the M7F is and the M7M and even the R27ER, but they're not quite that good yet. But the, ma the main problem with it is that you don't have the ability to fire from further away than 40 kilometers. I know, I know, 40 kilometers, it's a lot of, ra a lot of range. Normally, you won't be doing that either way with any other missile, kind of, just maybe you know, from time to time, depending on the missile, especially in the Phoenix, and depending on the radar, depending on many things, you, you will end it up, especially in these bigger maps. Uh, so it's not like a, a really a big problem to the aircraft, but it is kind of weird. It just doesn't have the receiving radiation from the aircraft from further than for like 40 something kilometers. So normally you will feel that even though the radar is telling you that you have the range for the target, uh, the missile will be black. The little little circle will be black. And that just will remain as uh, indicative, in, in, an indicator that you should not fire the missile because it won't track, you know. I have to check if the M7 sh is having that as well uh, because it should. Uh, actually, the sparrows, they don't have INS or anything like that. So we won't, even though you have the range uh, aerodynamically to actually hit a target like this, for example, this is a great example. You have the range in the aerodynamics of the missile with the power to weight of the missile, missile and everything to actually hit the target. But the seeker doesn't see the target and you can only fire from 40 kilometers. Um, and that's just a very realistic thing, thing for missiles that don't have INS. It happens the same thing as the R27R, for example, but the thing is that the R27R actually has an INS system that will tell with information from the uh, aircraft's radar where the target is, and then it will, the missile will basically go until it gets that detection. Uh, what is the detection itself? It is the amount of radiation bouncing back from the aircraft. So these missiles, for example, they don't have INS, so they need to have the bouncing back radiation from the target uh, specifically large enough or big enough to actually detect the target as well. Not only your radar need to detect the target, but also the, your missile needs to detect 
uh, the radiation coming from your radar that is actually bouncing off the target. So air missiles that are basically the sparrows, right? But missiles that don't have INSs or inertial navigation systems, they will have this limitation apparently right now, which is realistic and very, very fun. And this is the main problem with the Super Temp Skyflash. Even though it has the energy, it is pretty good at range, it will not have this seeker capacity of locking onto something that it has more range uh, than 40 kilometers. As I said, is it a big deal? No, it is not a big deal. It doesn't change the fact that the aircraft itself is amazing and most of the time you will not be using at further than 40 kilometers anyway, right? But with the bigger maps that they added, you will feel that you are a little bit behind compared to the F-14 and the aircraft that can actually fire the R-27R and ER, right? But even with that, as I was saying, it's still amazing. Um, it is fairly fast, actually. I was... I, I thought it was going to be very bad, even at that. But the speed is pretty alright. You can outrun most of the third generation aircraft. Of course, a MiG-29, something like that, you will have problems dealing with it uh, in the sense of trying to run. Obviously, a dogfight is out of the table anytime, uh, every single time. Just don't get into dogfights. Try to use it as a booming zoom, or I wouldn't say a booming zoom, but it is kind of like that. You will need to just um, stay fast, attack by surprise, go through the targets and just run, and then you stay back a little bit, make sure that nobody's following you, firing missiles or anything like that, then you can turn and try to re-attack. And this is going to be the major tactic involved, involved on this aircraft. It is a fast aircraft that needs to use the speed to its advantage because it is, in the flight performance, the only advantage that it will kinda have against some of the targets, so it even depends on the target that you are trying to face or anything like that, right? So really, really be careful on that kind of side of things. It is a lower BR, so it's fine, but still, you need to be careful. Um, on the size of, uh, on the on the side of uh, other things, uh, for example, the cannon, I think you are barely going to use it, but if you do, it has the leading indicator. It has the 30 millimeter, 180 rounds, I think. Uh, so it's pretty all right. It's just that the way that the, the tactic that I use in this aircraft um, is, is in, a, in a such a way that you barely use the cannon. So you really need to be careful on that. Uh, and obviously the A9Ls, yeah, I mean, they, the Limas are pretty all right. Uh, they are going for a lot of flares very quickly, but I mean, it's just a matter of trying to use it correctly, always fire from a rear aspect, don't do what I did uh, shortly before this, don't try to fire from a front aspect, you will miss a lot of the shots, and your main weapon will always be the Raider with the Sky Flash at the, far, at the start of the match, right? And then after, afterwards you can actually get A9Ls uh, and get some people by surprise firing on them as well. So, but you do need to be careful. It's an aircraft that it is, please listen to this part, man. It is not for everybody, okay? It's not a very, like, enjoyable aircraft to fly. Um, why? Because you have to do a lot of these. You have to just run a lot. Because even against an EJ, even against an F4, I might lose the dogfight, so I don't want to risk it. And if an F16 comes close to you, you're done. So a lot of the times you're just running away. So it's not very comfortable, you know? It's not an aircraft that you just hop in and fly and you have fun, in my opinion. Uh, but it is a very initial thought. I need to fly it more, but still, I think it's just an aircraft that it is for people that like interceptors. So I do like it. I love interceptors. I love fast aircraft that only do one good thing, which is BVR. So I love this type of thing. But still, you need to be careful, okay? If you are a normal player looking for a, a, your first kind of BVR kind of feeling, really BVR kind of feeling with an aircraft and you are a, a British main, you will have problems uh, dealing with this aircraft at first. Eventually you get it right, but I think it's just a matter of not giving up on it and just making sure that you learn from your mistakes. Because a small mistake on this, 
can lead you to lose a battle and it's just problematic, right? And as you see over here, it is pretty good at even closer ranges, the super temp. Um, as I said, don't expect it to be a very, very super mega long range weapon, but it is indeed comparable to the other missiles that we have. It is going to be able to hit targets from 20 to 30 kilometers pretty easily if the target doesn't like go too low or maybe go cold or anything like that. You have the same problems as others, uh, other raiders and missiles. You have the still the same problems, right? But yeah, as you see, again, 45 kilometer, we don't have um, uh, a seeker, uh, you know, return on the radar. So you cannot fire from further away than 40 kilometers. And you see on the right side of the radar there, we have the aer the, uh, aerodynamic range on it. So it's more due to the fact of not having the seeker uh, actually detecting the radiation from coming uh, from such a, a long range target, right? That's the only thing that I would say that got caught me off guard because I I knew about this little feature, not a feature, like this problem with these sparrows in real life, but I never thought that they were actually going to add it. Still, I need to test it out with the M7F and M7M because they need to have the same problem as the Sky Flash, uh, but still uh, it is fun to have a more realistic kind of situation there. But it is very very fun to fly it go out there and get it it is worth it if you are if you were waiting for it it is worth it trust me it's just a little bit a little bit difficult to learn how to use it but the tornado is amazing man it really is a fun aircraft i still prefer the mig 29 but it's just my my baby right so yeah <laughs> but anyway i hope you enjoyed make sure to subscribe and go out there enjoy the game uh, don't mind too much about only about the grind and yeah be safe out there Make sure to subscribe. I don't know if I told you guys that, but still. And I see you guys on the next one. So, bye guys. See you.